Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Bandai Tamashi Nation's Dragon Ball Z SH Figure Arts unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than Cooler in his final form. I personally could not be more excited to see this figure in hand. It's one that I've been hoping that Bandai would be tackling in the line, and finally here he is. When I was a young lad and Blockbuster Video was still a thing, whenever we went in there I would immediately run to the Dragon Ball Z section and pick out Cooler's Revenge, the film where this guy debuted, and of course pretty much saw this a ton of times. So when when they announced that this was happening I was over the moon. Now if you are planning on picking this guy up he is available from toyswonderland.com. I have included the link for that down in the description below and they do have 12 month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art for Cooler. It's done in the usual Dragon Ball figure art style, an open window where we can see Cooler himself, and a couple of silhouetted images in the background with a massive one right up front, a few more on the side, and a ton of awesome product shots in various poses down below here. But let's be honest, we're not here to dissect the box art, we're more here to take a look at Cooler himself. And honestly, I don't know why, but for some reason I wasn't prepared for a figure as big and beefy as this guy is in hand. Which is probably on me, because I've seen the film a ton of times, and yeah, this guy is massive. But I can already tell this is one that I'm going to be super happy with. Now of course he does come with a few bits and pieces, so what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all the bits and pieces that come with Cooler. Now unfortunately he is rather light on accessories, he doesn't come with a ton of stuff. Does that bother me personally? No, not really. I mean, I think most of the budget went into making Cooler as big and as badass as possible. Would I have liked some effect pieces and a display base? Yeah, absolutely, but I'm also not all that upset. Now he does come with his tail. This is technically part of him, so not really an accessory, but it does come separate in the box. You do have one joint up on top that has a hinge forward and back and also a swivel, and then that very same joint in the middle of the tail for the same range of motion. That's pretty much it though, the tail itself is really nicely sculpted, it does have a ton of creases in there, so it looks very lifelike. We also have two extra feet. These are potentially for him to be gripping onto someone, or he's flying, or he's sort of resting on the edge of a cliff with his toes hanging down. I really like the way they look, the shade of purple is fantastic spot on to cooler in my opinion, and I also do like the high gloss on his nails there. That does once again carry over to his hands. They have the same high gloss black for the nails, the purple is identical, and there is a teeny bit of shading in the crevices on the hands themselves. Lastly you get an alternate head sculpt for cooler. This one is the face that he has right before his mouth plate comes up and covers well, his mouth. I personally won't ever be displaying my cooler with this particular head sculpt because I think he looks way cooler, yes I said it, pun intended, with the mouth plate on. Also when you are using this you will have to swap out his big crest onto this head sculpt because you only get one. What we are going to do now though is get cooler himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And yeah, it does what it says in the tin. That is cooler from Dragon Ball Z. And I'm so very happy. I've waited for so long for them to tackle this guy in this line, but I'm pretty sure technically he's still not considered canon, so I thought they were never going to make him. Hopefully, now that we're seeing this guy, that means we could 
potentially see other characters from the Dragon Ball Z films that aren't canon. I'm hoping to see Janemba, maybe Tapion, who knows, we'll have to wait and see as time goes on. But for now, just getting cooler, I see this as an absolute win. He's a big, chonky, massive figure, he's nicely painted, I love the sculpt, even though he is relatively light on accessories like we just discussed, I'm still more than happy with this release. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. Right off the bat, I'm super impressed with how he looks. It is a very simple character design, but it is spot on to the animation. They have also added some extra detail over the top to give him a little bit more oomph in the display. Now let's talk about the face first. Don't worry, I will swap out the head in just a second, but this right here is my preferred look. I love the mouth plate, they've done the panel lines, they've picked them out in paint, they're not just sculpted in there. The fiery, punchy, vibrant red for the eyes, and of course the glossy blue orbs that are dotted around the place look awesome. Also, on all of the white pieces, he has these sculpted in little lines that is accurate to the show. He did look like that. It's something that I hope that they start to do more because they do use that on rather simple design pieces of armor just to give it a little bit more surface detail. And it looks fantastic. It's pretty much on every white panel. It just adds to the overall look. Another thing that adds to the overall look is the shading. Usually I'm not a huge fan of shading, but if this wasn't here, it would look a little bit boring. Basically, in all of the recessed areas, he has this darker purple shading. Granted, I have seen customizers take this to an entirely new level and it looks awesome, but for now, for me, fresh out of the box, I think this looks great. You won't see me complaining about it. Flipping him around to see the tail, it does have an interesting connection just like we saw with First Form Freezer. Some people were complaining about how that connects to the body, you can see the ball joint, but I mean, I don't really see any other way of including this range of motion and having the joint hidden, so to me that's not really an issue. I also like that he has all of his spikes on the back, which of course they should be there, they were there for the animation, and they're here in figure format. The other thing to note is this guy is massive. You will see when we do the comparisons in just a second, I'm really impressed with how chonky and substantial Cooler feels in hand. Now of course I'm pretty sure you all want to see what he looks like with the alternate head sculpt on. So there we have it. I personally think the other one looks better, but I do know some people like this look. And because he is relatively light on accessories, it makes sense to give him this faceplate, because you saw him like this in the movie, for a very brief second, mind you, and luckily never again, because he wore that mouthplate the entire rest of the film. I just love that look, it's so totally badass, but this is still accurate and they've done a really nice job. I like the smirk, I like the way it's painted, and it fits in proportion with the rest of the body. He still looks cool, but with the other one, he looks a lot cooler. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Koala standing alongside Goku, and you can see there is a rather significant size difference here, which is perfect. I love the way these two look together. I'm honestly tempted to pick up another version of this Goku, the full power Super Saiyan Goku, so I can have him facing off alongside Koala in the display, because currently I have plans for this one. He's going to go in the Android saga, but nevertheless, this guy looks awesome. He's big, he's beefy, he's imposing, he feels substantial in hand, you feel like you're getting your money's worth. So yeah, I'm really happy with how Kula has turned out. Just going over articulation on Kula. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a ball joint at the base of the head, but another ball joint at the base of the neck. So it does get a fair amount forward and back, swivel and also some pivot side to side. The arms will go up a significant amount, forward and back, and there is a butterfly joint that goes both ways at the shoulder. These pieces are also on swivels. Speaking of swivels, there's one at the bicep 
a double bend at the elbow that gets you slightly past 90, and of course a figure art style joint for the wrist. As for the torso, there's one joint up top and another down below for crunch forward and back, some pivot side to side, as well as swivel. As for the legs, they go forward to there, they go out to there, a swivel at the thigh, double bend at the knee, and of course one of those hinge swivel style joints for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the Bandai Tamashi Nation's SH Figure Arts Cooler Figure. Now I was super excited going into this, like I said I've seen this film a ton of times when I was younger, I'm actually considering going back and re-watching it again just for old times sake because this figure has reignited my love for Cooler. I mean, the design is so darn awesome. He's this big, chonky, badass version of technically Frieza. I mean, it's supposed to be his brother, obviously, but I mean, if we saw Frieza in this form, I don't think there would be anyone saying that he looked like a weak, scrawny character. I mean, this guy oozes power. I'm super happy with how this figure has turned out. Is it 100% perfect? No, there are some things which I would have liked them to have changed. Namely, when you move the shoulders back, you get to see the pins that those big shoulder pad pieces are pinned into the body with. It's a bit unsightly, it's less than ideal. I also wouldn't have minded a little bit of a wash down in those sculpted in lines. I am happy they're there, granted, and when the light hits it, it looks great, just like the animation, but still, a little bit of paint would have made them pop even more, and lastly, some energy effects would have been a really nice touch. But overall, I'm still happy with this guy, I'm glad we got him, and I'm hoping that eventually we also get a metal cooler. That's another really awesome design for this guy right here. Now, if you are looking to pick him up, I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is, of course, down in the description below, and they do have 12-month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.